Hey guys, Josh for the Adept Ape channel here today, and today we have a very exciting video that I've been working on for a couple weeks. I even have a guest, Stephen Cox, on this video. And it is the future of the diesel industry. Now what am I talking about? I'm talking about trucking, earth moving, small pickups, pretty much everything that diesel affects now, how is it going to be affected in the future? And why am I making this video? Well, it's a subject I think about a lot, but I also get comments a lot. People wondering if, hey, you know, I'm I'm a young guy, I'm getting into the diesel field. Is is you know Tesla gonna make diesel obsolete? Are we gonna run out of diesel in a couple years? I just want to calm your fears that we're not running out of diesel anytime soon. Uh, British Petro Petroleum, which is one of the biggest petroleum companies, has estimated that there's about 1.1 trillion barrels of petroleum left. Now, of course, not all petroleum can be turned into diesel or gas. It gets processed into diesel, gas, kerosene, jet fuel. But that's a lot. That's about, they estimate, about 50 years more. Also, a little, little known fact, a barrel of oil only has 42 gallons in it, not 55. Now, that does not mean we will ever run out of diesel. In fact, we will never run out of diesel. Now, you might be asking, well, how's that possible? It's a limited resource. Well... As the amount of diesel decreases, the price will increase. So it'll get to a point that it's actually, actually impractical to even use at one point. So we'll still have diesel left, but it'll just get more and more expensive to use. Okay, let's hear from Stephen Cox. So where do I think diesel technology is going to go? And uh, where do I think the industry is heading? I think that first and foremost, I think the DEF stuff is going to go out the window. I think in the next five, six years, they're going to do away with it, possibly the next 10. I think you're going to start seeing a lot smaller diesel packages powering bigger. You know, instead of having the, uh, the, the old technology, the old school thought process of bigger is better, they're going to shrink it down a lot. You're going to start seeing in a lot more pickups, you know, F-150s, uh, half-ton pickups, stuff like that. I think you're going to see a uh, kind of an integration with electrical ve uh, electric vehicles and diesel, kind of a hybrid technology is going to come out and make a little uh, presence. In the next 50 years, I think there's going to be a, a breakthrough in battery technology, or hopefully, um, that'll uh, uh, it might, might completely do away with the uh, on-road diesel trucks. I don't, I don't know. As far as the industry for technicians, though, I think it's a fantastic industry. It's always growing. It's always developing. There's always every shop out there is short-handed for you guys that actually want to be a tech or are a tech it's 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 almost limitless possibilities because you can go anywhere on the planet with diesel sir uh, diesel technology diesel service uh, being a diesel technician and just keep up with everything that you can learn everything watch all the videos you can go to manufacturer training if it's available take any kind of training you can to stay uh, current with the today's current technology but uh thanks josh uh, for letting me collaborate with him hopefully we'll do some more collaborations in the future and thanks a lot Thanks, Stephen, for that. You can check him out on his own channel, aptly named Stephen Cox. And all his videos are pretty much diesel-related or tool-related. Um, good channel. Check it out. Now, what are my opinions on the subject? And that's what these really are, is opinions. Because no one knows the future. I don't care if your name is Elon Musk, Uncle Sam, or Al Gore. No one knows the future. But I'm going to be discussing some things, some trends that are occurring in the industry. What I think, if you're going to be a mechanic or want to be a driver, an operator, what you need to look out for, what fields I think will be decreasing or increasing. So, what are my opinions? Well, let's go segment by segment. So, what about electric? Is electric going to take over? Are we going to have electric bulldozers? Are we going to have electric trucks? electric trains, everything just going to be electric before and not even use petroleum-based fossil fuels. Well, let's look at a few items that are currently coming out in the next year or two that are being made by a few different companies. Okay, so the three major trucks that are real popular, at least are well-known that are coming out that are electric, are made by three different companies. Two of them you've probably heard before, one you haven't. Of course, there is the Tesla, and they're coming out with their model, the Semi. Now, from what I could research, this is the most viable and seemingly practical electric truck that's coming out. Got a couple pictures of them here. Uh, they're very aerodynamic looking. They have a single driver's seat. Uh, I'll show you a picture of the cab. What I noticed, uh, no air horn. Of course, no shifter. And uh, they give you these little cups, it looks like. You can put your sunflower seeds and cigarette butts in wonderful and 
It has a 500 mile range, although there's also a 300 mile version, and this is full electric, this is not a hybrid. Now, when I first saw this, I was like, okay, 500 mile range. Well, you know, that's probably not very practical for an on-highway long distance hauling truck, but a lot of trucks are regional, or they go from, let's say, maybe LA to San Francisco, or San Jose, or they're going from Portland to Seattle, New York, to Buffalo, something like that, you know, not super long distances. And what came to mind was, well, how long is the charging time on this? It must be hours and hours. Well, Tesla's saying that it's only a half an hour charging time for about 80% of the range back. So half an hour for 400 miles. That's pretty quick. Um, now, they're not producing this yet. I believe this is supposed to come out in early 2019. Of course, they're taking pre-orders on them, just like all their vehicles. And uh, people be, seem to be pretty satisfied with their their cars that they've made they seem to live up to the hype so if the trucks do you might be seeing these tesla trucks uh, pretty quickly so what are the other two companies well the other one you've heard of is cummins cummins is actually making a small single axle um, aerodynamic on a quite as much looking truck it out of the three trucks it looks the most like a standard standard cab single axle truck the problem with the cummins it only shows a hundred mile range now, maybe that would work in a dock or a port, something like that. But I think if someone's going to invest money in a truck, they're going to want a little more range than, say, 100 miles. And, of course, on a battery setup, over time that range will decrease and decrease until the batteries need to be replaced. Now, the other company, which this truck's supposed to come out before the Tesla, and this is Thor Trucks. And I believe the range was about 400 miles, so pretty good range out of this truck. Um, and it's a small company. And I believe they're based out of California. It, it just goes to show when you get a new industry like this, you know, when's the last time you saw a new truck company come out? You know, you're going to get a lot of venture capitalism into this industry, and you might see a bunch of different brands. Some of them might take off, some might not. And then you'll be left with some very competitive companies, okay? So that those are the trucks that are coming out in the next year or two. And let's discuss some hybrids. Now, of course, an electric truck is going to be much simpler. It's not going to have a transmission. It's not going to have true differentials. It's going to have electric motors that drive the wheels. It's not going to need a cooling package such as a radiator or a cooling fan. A lot of items like that. But what about if they had a hybrid? Now, I don't mean a Prius. I mean a diesel electric. So let's say a garbage truck. There's companies such as Right Speed that are going to use a turbine to a diesel turbine to create electricity which will then be stored in a battery pack that will then be used to directly drive the wheels now what are the advantages of this well an electric motor produces torque it can produce zero to max torque at any rpm unlike an engine where it has a torque curve so an electric motor, let's say on a garbage truck, would be perfect because what does a garbage truck do? It accelerates at full RPM for 50 feet, and then it slams on the brakes, wasting all the energy it took to get that 50 feet. So you have a lot of wear in the engine, you have a lot of fuel burned, you have a lot of wear on the brakes, and everything, all the components in the drivetrain. So in a hybrid you wouldn't have hardly any of those issues because an electric motor doesn't wear necessarily. It's non-contact. So you just have an electromagnetic field that produces the torque, turns the wheels. Now, a lot of these have regenerative braking. So it will accelerate in speed up to the desired speed. So house to house or building to building. When it slams on the brakes, it's actually recuperating or recouping most of the energy that it just used to get up to speed and it's sending it back to the battery so you don't have a big loss not only that when you're using the regenerative regenerative braking there's no wear it's not brakes you know you're not taking your pads or your shoes and wearing them into the uh, the drums or the discs so you're getting that energy back not only that you don't have the the acceleration in the engine rpm now, why is that? Because on a turbine, you're making a constant RPM. So it's going to spin and create electricity, but the RPMs aren't going to change. The load might change depending on if the batteries are low or batteries are high. 
So this is a very interesting technology. The problem with this is you still have a diesel engine. You then have a generator, a battery pack, um, but some things are eliminated, such as the transmission, uh, the drive shafts would be eliminated, things like that. Uh, it would still have also brakes. It wouldn't be pure regenerative braking. Okay, that's some interesting technology out there. Okay, so enough about trucks. What about equipment? Are bulldozers, wheel loaders, and skid steers all going to become electric? Well, no, I don't think so. At least not any time in the near future. And the reason for that is, what are these items? Well, they're earth-moving equipment. And earth-moving equipment is usually on mines, construction sites, not next to an electrical source. And not only these items are extremely heavy, so they pretty much are going to be diesel-powered for the perceivable future. Now, that doesn't mean anything's not going to change on these. I think the drivetrain is going to start looking more like a hybrid than the current engine transmission hydraulic setup that they're using. I still think hydraulics will be used, but certain pieces of machinery are already electric or they're making electric versions. CAT makes a D7E. Now what this uses is basically a generator package and then has electric motor drivers for the tracks. It also still has hydraulics. Now the advantage of this is similar to the garbage truck we just discussed. It doesn't have all these changes in RPMs. Also changes in RPMs and idling, that's when your engine is least efficient and it's burning more fuel to increase or decrease in RPM, creates more soot, more emissions. Now there are certain pieces of equipment that have pretty much always been electric, pure electric. There's things like electric rope shovels. Now these are very high voltage. Most of them are 7200 volts or 4160, and they have to be hardwired into some sort of gen set. So maybe in the future we'll have battery skid steers or battery excavators, but you would still need some sort of generator package to produce the electricity to recharge them. Who knows? Like I said, I'm not a psychic. I'm just telling you what I think the industry is going to move towards. Now, of course, all of these are still going to have maintenance items on them, so it's not like they're going to be trouble-free completely. Now, the real gist of this question is, what do I need to do to stay in this industry? Are there going to be mechanics in the future? Drivers, operators? Well, of course there's going to be mechanics. Um, you know, that's the more machines, the more people you need to fix the machines. So let's look at what the future looks like for self-driving vehicles, trucks, things like that. You know, I hate to say it, but automation is going to eliminate some jobs. Okay, it's going to eliminate a lot of jobs. Now, what jobs do I think are going to go first or start to be reduced first? Well, let me give you a little personal note on this. So locally, our garbage truck companies just invested in all new garbage trucks. And what they did was they always had a driver and then the trash collector guy on the back. Well, they got rid of the trash collector guy on the back. Now, how they do that? Well, now they just have a single driver and there's a robotic arm on the side that goes, grabs the trash can, and then dumps it. So there's only a single driver. So they've basically halved their workforce. And why is that? Automation or robotics. So items like that, you know, something where you're just picking something up, something that can be easy, easily replicated are going to be eliminated in the future because companies can save a ton of money. I mean, if you think... You know, if they were in a union or, you know, a lot of these um, utility companies like a, a trash collecting service, they're going to have very good benefits. They're going to be fairly highly paid. They're going to have workers' comp insurance. Each employee is very expensive. So to replace them with a robot makes sense. So what are we looking at in, let's say, trucking? Well, I would say probably the biggest fear is for drivers. Now, if you're 70 years old and you're going to be retiring in five years, you probably got nothing to worry about. But if you're 20 and you want to be a long-haul trucker your entire life, 
I'd say you'd want other revenue sources available to you. And the reason for that is I think trucking, at least on highway, is going to be the first to start using self-driving features. Uber already has it. Some cities, some city buses already use it. So, you know, maybe uh, city bus drivers, long haul truckers, those jobs can potentially be eliminated in the next five to 10 years. Now, obviously it's not gonna be one day, you know, judgment day where everyone just gets eliminated and Skynet takes over and there's no more jobs. It's going to be a phasing out process. Now there's companies that are owned by Uber. Also Tesla has self-driving technology. Um, there's a company called Auto and they have, they've even done a few runs of self-driving trucks. So what's the advantage of a self-driving truck? Well, obviously you don't have a driver anymore. So that's gonna save the company a ton of money. Not only that, if you don't have a driver anymore, you can save weight on the vehicle. You wouldn't need seats. You wouldn't need gauges. You wouldn't even need a windshield. You won't need AC, you won't need heating. You know, you could shave, you won't need a cab, you won't need a sleeper cab, that's for sure. Um, you could save thousands of pounds off the truck itself, which would enable you to do more freight. Not only that, automation eliminates, you know, people calling in sick. Um, driver logs, no more driver logs because there's no driver. So a package, let's say if you're FedEx or UPS, doesn't have to be driven and then the driver has to take a break. It would just drive and drive and drive. You go cross country, you know, in a couple days opposed to having to stop and do logs and all this stuff. Um, it's, it's a real revenue benefit for companies. Now as a person, if you're a driver, that's not such a good thing, right? But there's other opportunities out there for you because if the company's saving money, it's gonna have money to spend on other items. Maybe you wanna become a data link engineer or a mechanic or a technician. I think mechanics are gonna have to increase in the future, even though maybe the diesel engine will be getting phased out. I mean, think about the amount of sensors, um, the data link circuits between all the sensors. Um, if there's driverless vehicles, you know, you're going to have to have mechanics. You're also still going to have tires, brakes, suspension. All these items are going to have to be maintained. Um, you know, I think it's a good field out there. But not only, like I was saying before about the earth moving equipment, there's still going to be an industry out there for diesels. Not only that, some items probably can't be replaced with an electric drive. Let's say backup generators. I've already made a video about power generation. You can't really have a battery generator you need something that can run for hours and hours and hours in the absence of the electrical grid to produce electricity so maybe power generation or getting into a power plant if everything starts going electric we're going to have to be able to produce more power on the infrastructure well that's my video on what my opinion on the future of the industry is going to be i'm actually excited about it um considering i work for cat in the truck shop and they haven't made a truck engine in about seven years now the industry is going to be changing, and with the industry changing, I'd like to know that there is going to be an industry in the future, okay?